So in a substation, we step down the voltage using a voltage transformer. Now this voltage transformer can be capacitive voltage transformer or inductive voltage transformer. But CVTs uh, offer some advantages which IVT cannot. And as a result, CVTs are very popularly used in the high voltage substation. In this video, we'll break down the differences between CVTs and IVTs so that you get better idea about both these devices. So let's start. Now in one of the previous video where we talked about how the capacitive voltage transformer works, many of you commented that you want to have a dedicated video talking or comparing the CVTs and the IVTs. And based on those comments, here is a dedicated video. So now let us start with the first and very important difference that is the working principle. How do these transformer operate? Starting with the inductive voltage transformer. Now IVT is works of uh, or operate similar in the way of the power transformer. We have the primary winding, uh, then we have the secondary winding, there is a magnetic core and it operates just similar to that of the regular transformer that we know. So very simple operating principle. But when we talk about capacitive voltage transformer, uh, the principle is little different there. In CVT, we have two types of principle you can see. First, we divide the voltage using capacitor, so voltage division by capacitor, and then also the electromagnetic induction. So these are the two principle which is used in the CVT. IVT is pretty simple, uh, the regular working principle of transformer, what you know, uh, it is the same transformer. CVT is different. So what we do when you connect a capacitors in parallel with the source, the voltage actually is divided. We, we saw the simulation also in uh, the video where we discussed how CVT operates. So voltage gets divided. So this is the first principle voltage division. So when you connect a tap in between, you will get a much lower voltage. But the problem is this intermediate voltage will still be little higher. So maybe in uh, 10 kV, 15 kV, 20 kV, depending on the capacitor configuration. And that voltage you of course cannot give to uh, the relays or meters directly. So we further need to step it down. And that's why we also have a small, um, you know, auxiliary transformer placed at the bottom of the CVT. And that will step down the voltage further and then the meters and relay can be connected and that's why uh, when we say working principle it's the voltage division by capacitor plus also the electromagnetic induction so that is one of the major difference how they operate now moving on to the second is the construction now the construction of uh, inductive voltage transformer is pretty simple and straightforward so we have first uh, the primary terminal so primary terminal will flow like this and at the bottom then we will have the primary winding, the secondary winding and the magnetic core. That's the basic simple principle of uh, the IVT and of course to insulate everything uh, will fill oil into this. So that's the very simple and straightforward construction that we have and very limited number of parts are there. But when we see the CVT construction, CVTs are having a lot of parts and you will understand that why. First of all, we have the capacitors, right? And then we are using the auxiliary transformer. You understood why we need that. And then we also have to add an inductor in series with that. Now this is needed because we are adding capacitors in the element. Uh, the output may change because of this, because this is the capacitive element. Load can be a resistive load, for example, the meters and uh, there will be issue of phase displacement. So to balance that out, a small inductor is also connected in circuit. Now, another problem, since we have capacitor and inductor connected, there can be a situation of resonance. Now res resonance is a situation in which, uh, uh, you know, very low impedance path is created because the uh, capacitive in impedance and inductive uh, reactance, not sorry, no, reactance, not impedance, Capacitive reactants and inductive reactants will cancel out each other at a certain frequency and it will create a very low impedance path. So that can saturate the core, output may be varied and things like that. It's a very rare scenario but can happen. And to avoid that we also have a damping circuit so it will avoid any sort of resonance that may occur in the CVT. And when you put everything together you get a capacitive voltage transformer. So the construction wise uh, CVT is little complicated when we compare it with the IVT. 
but this construction is beneficial uh, when we go higher in the voltage level so ivt is maybe okay till 145 kv or lower classes but as we go to the higher classes of voltage 420 kv 800 kv the ivt construction becomes challenging let me actually show that to you using the actual numbers so let's go to the next parameter now uh, let's talk about the weight now as i said the inductive voltage transformer we have a magnetic core we have primary winding we have secondary winding so as the voltage increases of course this magnetic core must also increase with that that is one once you increase that you will also have to increase the insulations because the voltage is increasing and you must also go up in the insulation strength so everything adds to the weight and that transformer becomes very very bulky and that is a problem so if i have to give you a real example if you compare 145 kv ivt and 145 kv cvt you will see the difference i've went through uh, most of the manufacturers data and this is what i found so ivt generally uh, approximately will uh, the weight of 145 kv ivt will be around 300 to 350 kilograms approximate number now this may vary manufacturer to manufacturer but if you compare 145 kV CVT with that, the CVT would be around only 200 to 250 kg. So almost 30% less in weight, right? And this difference increases when you go upper in the voltage classes. So for example, uh, let's talk about 420 kV. IVT weighs around 1700 to 1800 kilograms. That's, that's huge, right? And when you compare it with the CVT, uh, it weighs only 400 to 500 kilograms. Again, the numbers are approximate and uh, it may change manufacturer to manufacturer. And here in this example, you can see almost 113% less weight of CVT compared to IVT. And this is not just the physical weight. We are also talking about the weight of insulating oil that we are using inside uh, the voltage transformer. Of course, IVT will need more oil to provide more insulation cvt compared to that will be less so if you look at this thing uh, it's not just the weight of the product because the ivts are getting bulky you also have to have a stronger support structure to hold that big device on it right on the other hand cvts can are since it's not very heavy a regular structure will do so the choice of support structure for this also varies uh, based on the type of voltage transformer that you are getting. And compared to IVT, because IVTs need more material, more insulation, more oil, the cost of that becomes also higher when we go up in the voltage level. For low voltage, it's perfectly fine, not a problem. But as we go upper, uh, the cost becomes higher, whereas CVTs, uh, they, they are cost effective compared to the IVT and there is one advantage that CVT offers which IVT absolutely cannot and that's why they dominate uh, the high voltage market high voltage substation uh, you will see that uh, in, in the coming slide now moving on let's talk about the application of these two now both of these transformer are used for voltage measurement voltage stepping down and that then can be used for relays or meters that is known to us and both of this transformer perform their job absolutely well there is no problem only thing is uh, the difference becomes in the construction and some of the advantage that they offer so when we talk about inductive voltage transformer they are available available up to 420 kilo volts but you will find rarely uh, IVT used for 420 kV or even 245 kV. Uh, generally, their uses is limited to 145 and lower than that. Very limited uh, application or substation where you will find IVTs are being used for 420 kV. On the other hand, uh, the capacity voltage transformer are used from 145 kV up to 800 kV. So they have wide range of application. Uh, you may not find them in the lower voltage class yet. Uh, but uh, for higher voltage classes they absolutely dominate right inductive voltage uh, transformer uses is limited now let's go next and talk about the thermal burden this is also very important that you understand now thermal burden let's first understand what is thermal burden when we say thermal burden we are not talking about the burden related to the accuracy we are talking about the thermals of uh, the voltage transformer the temperature limits of the voltage transformer 
So thermal burden is the burden that tells you how much power you can extract from the voltage transformer without uh, increasing uh, the voltage limit as defined by the IEC standard or any other standard for that matter. So for example, if you have a voltage transformer and you're taking 200 VA power from that and up because of that power, there is no thermal effect happening in uh, the CVTs or in the IVTs, right? So safely you can extract that power. So that particular burden is what we refer to as thermal burden. They do not have any impact uh, on the thermals. The thermal limit stays within the limits as defined by the standard. For example, if uh, the transformer is rated as 200 VA for thermal burden, so that means you can take 200 VA from that transformer without having any thermal issues. If you go beyond 200 VA, then there can be issues, maybe overheating of uh, the voltage transformer and that can damage the insulation. So that is the significant uh, of uh, thermal burden. Now, when we talk about IVTs, IVTs has very high limits of thermal burden. You can extract a huge amount of power from them and it can go up to 4000 VA depending on uh, the configuration, but can go up to 4000 volt ampere. Right, you can extract that power, that much power from uh, the IVTs. And this is not because they are superior, but because how they are constructed, right? There is no complex construction uh, that is there. Even uh, there are special type of transformer, uh, they refer it as the power voltage transformer, which can supply significant amount of power and can also help in a voltage measurement. So this is uh, maybe useful in the remote areas where there is no uh, active grid available you can step down the voltage supply a significant amount of customers using that so that concept is available with uh, ivt cvt is on the other hand uh, you will not find the thermal burden as high as the ivts in thousands of uh, va uh, it is limited to few hundred uh, volt amperes only now please note that doesn't mean cvts are not good even when we say 300 or 400 va that's huge power and in today's digital era, uh, you know, the digital relays, the digital meters, they do not consume huge amount of power. So even if it is rated 300, 400, I think should be good enough. So that is the uh, difference in thermal burden. But for in this case, definitely uh, the IVT score more. And now the last point because of which the CVTs are very, very popularly used in the high voltage uh, uh, application that is the communication system. So as you know, the transmission line, they just don't transmit uh, the power, only the power, but also the communication signals can be transmitted via that. And that goes on very high frequency. Uh, the power goes on power frequency, which is 50 to 60 Hertz. Uh, the communication signal goes very high, 500 uh, kilohertz and things like that. So uh, there are devices which will capture that uh, communication signal and then process it uh, in the different devices. IVTs in this function plays no role, right? You, you you cannot use the IVTs for this. But the advantage with CVT is that if you, when you couple it with the wave traps, uh, they can be used for power line carrier communication, PLCC. That is the biggest advantage CVT offers, right? And no doubt why they dominate the high voltage segment because of this particular reason. Now what happens is let's say you have a 245 kV substation and you also doing the PLCC uh, via the transmission line. So if you have the IVTs, you will also have to buy a coupling capacitor with that so that the signal will find a low impedance path through that capacitor and then goes to the power line carrier communication, right? But when you get a CVT instead of IVT, you don't have to buy a coupling capacitor, dedicated coupling capacitor for that. CVTs can give the direction to that signal and then they can go to the power line carrier communication. Now, how did that happens? I've already talked about that in the video where I've explained what is wave trap. If you're interested in watching that, I'll give link for that video down in the description. You can go and check it out. So the bottom line is uh, if you are using IVT and also the power line carrier communication, uh, you will have to purchase a coupling capacitor also with that. If you are using CVT and power line ca carrier communication, um, you just don't need the coupling capacitor. CVTs basically will act as the coupling capacitor. And 
when it is coupled with the you know wave traps uh, few people also call it as ccvt coupling capacitor voltage transformer so that term is also being used so i hope you are now clear in the differences between cvt and ivt and if this video was helpful then give it a thumbs up and do share it with the people you think might be interested in knowing and if you want to know how cvt's work i talked about that in one dedicated video i'll put link for it down in the description you can go and check it out also i have a very popular playlist on current transformer if you wish to know all the details about current transformer that also you will get down in the description right so that's all for this video guys i'll see you in another video with another interesting topic but till then keep watching keep learning